It's time to wake the F up. The very thing they fudded you out of is the very thing they're going to be using for your new monetary system. Buckle up. I gotta give in now. I just gotta live this now. I'm gonna be and I'm gonna kill this stuff real quick. I'm gonna go take it to town. Cause I gotta be that king in the room and I'm not gonna mad when I'm back with the real. Cause I am just on the journey. You just know that I'm just going to say. Warriors, rise. Grand rising. Good evening, warriors all over the world. My name is Coach JB. It's nice to meet you. From my heart to yours, I want to say I love you. Everything I share with you is coming from good intentions. Not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I use social media to document my journey so my grandkids and my kids' kids' kids can watch this because this is going to be one of the biggest shifts in generational wealth. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I helped over 6,000 warriors worldwide understand the game so they can't be played. There is no get rich quick it doesn't exist everybody's telling you how to take action how to get rich quick in crypto it doesn't exist warriors everybody who tries to get rich in crypto crypto or any investment gets wrecked it's about being an intelligent investor and most of all understanding how to rewire the foundation here and here discipline and consistency is the key that's why one percent owns 97 percent of the wealth everybody's telling you how to get rich quick and that's the quickest way to get wrecked quick. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to help 6,000 warriors worldwide. All right, so let's dive right into it, Warriors. So today what we're going to talk about is I'm going to share with you guys uh, from a logical circuit and a 30,000-foot overview is how at first they were showing you cryptocurrencies of fraud. Everybody was against cryptocurrency. Jamie Dimon told you if you sold cryptocurrency, I'm paraphrasing, that you are going to be fired from the company. Or if you engage in cryptocurrency at the same time JB, JP Morgan was investing in cryptocurrency, at the same time JB Morgan, JP Morgan excuse me, was creating their own blockchain technology, Bank of America has the most, this is all documented, you could see this, Bank of America has the most blockchain patents, guys. Warren Buffett closed out of all of his bank stocks, moved into Japan, moved, not moved, but moved investments into Japan, into large companies out there. He held one bank stock, Bank of America, and he said it's because he likes the CEO. Come on, guys. Come on. It's time to wake the fuck up. Your whole monetary system is switching. Russia developing payment gateways with partners like Turkey, mulling crypto settlements. Russia and China teaming up. India detaching from oil. Everybody's setting up their own monetary system through blockchain technology. They're going to have a central bank digital currency, and there's going to be an intermediary that connects the central bank digital currencies. There's going to be people who get very wealthy by in investing in the infrastructure of the new Web.0 to Web 3.0, payment rails, supply chain, and there's going to be a lot of people who get wrecked for following get-rich-quick mentalities. Okay. I'm just I'm just trying to trying to share with you guys what's happening in the game, okay? If everybody was able to get rich quick and this was easy, then there'd be a lot more wealthy people. But the fact is the middle class is getting wiped out, leveraged towards technology, moving down to the working poor. A lot of people are going to get rich in crypto and they're going to come collapsing down because elites don't let you know what's about to happen. Markets are emotional. Billionaires use astrology and emotion. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So Russia... Everybody was against crypto. China was banning crypto. And now they're all getting into crypto. OK, so Russia developing payments gateways with partners like Turkey, mulling crypto settlements. As we move along, lack of stablecoin regulation could push issuers out of the U.S., says Austin Campbell. Lawmakers didn't reach a consensus between political parties on stablecoin bill. As one witness warned, and I'm going to show you that actual video, this lack of regulatory clarity could drive certain projects abroad now remember guys they were all against crypto on both sides of the fence not every single one of them we had some uh some warriors out there fighting for us but is it by chance family is it by chance that all of a sudden gary gensler is getting attacked by the um the the, the congress right around this 
This is all planned out, guys. The next day, they're having stable coin payments needs for regulation. As all these companies or countries are bringing out their own uh, monetary system through cryptocurrency. Guys, 2022 was cryptocurrencies a fraud. There's a reason why at the World Economic Forum, there's only a couple companies there. And the number one conversation was crypto. First, they resist it. Then they sue it. Then they regulate it. Then they join it. There's a reason why the Ripple case has lasted this long and they have not reached a settlement for almost two years. When they're ready for the stablecoin regulation, they're going to release the case and it's going to dictate how the crypto markets operate. So we're going to watch a, a few clips from this um, Senate hearing yesterday around the role of uh, stable coins in the payment system and a need for legislation. So now they're like, you know, cryptocurrency is fraud. Now it's part of the system. And now we need to regulate it. Told you guys we're in the regulation phase, joining phase from 2023 to 2024 is your opportunity to accumulate in 2024 going into 2025. We're going to have a nice bull run. OK, you need to have an exit plan. Get out in excitement. Do not wait till euphoria. When you exit, you need to secure in retirement type vehicles that have zero floor retirement type vehicles that produce cash flow cash flow assets okay i matured over over the last couple of years i thought cryptocurrency is my retirement crypto is not your retirement if you'd have horrible spending habits and you haven't changed your subconscious right around wealth if you make a million dollars you're gonna have a million dollars worth of bills uh, payment stable coins are an important part of the money for small to medium sized stable coins they're fine at the state level when they become very large and systemic, they should probably exist at the federal level. We don't need a $2 million stable coin being regulated by the OCC or the Federal Reserve. It's not an effective use of time, but nobody is suggesting that JP Morgan be only state regulated. So I think there- So he's gonna dive into, this is one of the witnesses here, and he's basically talking about, you know, the, there needs to be regulation on large stable coin operations he's saying not everything the smaller ones need to be regulated but he's going to dive in here how basically we because of gary gensler's horrible policy or hor horrible uh, ability to lead the sec we are pushing innovation outside of the united states there is a way to make these things work they serve the purpose of money on a blockchain and that is what is ultimately the real innovation here is the blockchain itself and the opportunities for transaction that that creates in the current environment, we are failing at making this happen as a country. Our regulation is currently chaos for stable coins. If I am an issuer and I want to create a stable coin, I technically don't know if I'm going to be answering to a state regulator, a federal banking regulator, the SEC, the CFTC. And it puts you in the same position as if you were out with friends and you were going to play you know, some sports game and somebody tells you, well, we may enforce the rules of baseball or football or basketball, and we're not going to tell you which in advance, and maybe some of them will all apply at the same time. It's unworkable. And what this means, and it pains me to say this as an American, is that things are moving offshore. I can say this with certainty because I advise my clients right now to do exactly that. There are so he is advising his clients to move their businesses offshore. Coinbase said, we're out of here if we don't get our shit together. Right. Ripple has said they want to move out of the United States. Now, I don't know. Again, guys, I don't get caught up in tribalism. I don't know if this is all a big ass dog and pony show. But what's happening right now in America is we're handing away the power. We're handing away our innovation. We're weakening the dollar. We're buried in debt. Our policies are not working. And I'm going to show you a little glimpse of what I'm going to go over tomorrow. OK, I think we're heading into a war narrative now. There are other regimes with significantly more regulatory clarity than what we have provided here, where if you are a good actor who wants to comply with the law, who wants to do the right thing, you want to go there because you know you can do it with certainty. And this, it's bad for jobs. It's bad for the strength of the dollar. It's bad for our status as a reserve currency. It's particularly bad for national security as blockchains have a significant degree of transparency that's not present in markets like actual cash markets, right? When somebody transacts on a blockchain, it's public. We may not always know right now who transacted, <clears throat> but you know the amount, the time, the wallets they traded with, what they sent back and forth. And with the richness of data, it's just a matter of time until you can identify the wallets. This is a huge 
data analysis tool to enforce our rules on the financial system that we are potentially giving away. Right now, over the past... See, what he said right there shows me this is a big-ass dog and pony show. You think that they're going to give away this type of power and they're going to just push this out of America. No, guys. America is the number one reserve currency. What America does dictates the financial industry. You don't think this is a dog and pony show? That the Ripple case was initiated by Jay Clayton, who's deeply ingrained in the banking system, who now sits on the board for the FDIC that was preparing for bail-ins for the banks. He's on crypto boards. He's on major financial boards. He sits on the FDIC board for banks. He's on the bank side. He's on the SEC side. He's on the cryptocurrency side. And we're just going to let all this innovation go out? Or are we going to be the catalyst for how crypto is regulated and everybody's on pins and needles waiting to see what America does? And then we're going to have massive institutional adoption and some massive price appreciation. Here, the biggest winner has been Tether. They are offshore. They don't work well with us. They facilitate some activity they probably shouldn't. But the chaos is leading that stable coin to grow while others shrink. The other thing that's happening is other countries are moving into this space. Just this morning before the hearing, I saw news that Russia is exploring legislation to formalize their ability to transact in crypto. If we don't take the field, others will do so before us. Boom. I'm telling you the war narrative, guys. It is a war narrative. It's going to move the monetary system. I already went over this one right here. Okay. So then we're going to dive into Kathy Woods. Kathy Woods is one of my favorite people to follow. So Kathy Woods. Ray Dalio. These are people that I follow. Um, and we're going to listen to her talk about blockchain technology. So she does this in the know. Um, she really just talks about the macro, micro, cryptocurrency, innovation. And I always listen to these because she gives so much great insight. She has a massive team. You know, we have a team of 27 people here um, that, you know, media, but we have a, a research team as well. And <clears throat> she obviously she's much higher level in, in her experience, but she has a full research team that researches this at an extremely deep level i'm not listening to some crypto youtuber and i'm not bashing myself or tiktoker i'm listening to the people who are moving large amounts of money who have large amounts of risk if they fuck up right if she messes up that's a big big deal if a youtuber messes up okay they mess up their portfolio a little bit right she's moving large amounts of money she's heavily looked at in the, in the uh, innovation space. I think the most remarkable of all the indicators that um, we monitor uh, was, was Bitcoin uh, during the crisis. Now, it typically acts like a risk off. Uh, it, it, it tends to do poorly uh, during risk off periods. This time it did the opposite. From March 10th, it, when it bottomed at 19,500, it has soared 55% to 30,200 uh, to $270. Uh, Ether has, has gone up 51. Okay, so here's my interpretation of what she's saying. And I apologize if I get this incorrect. Anybody, if I get this wrong, please comment below and, and give some clarity. So I think what she means by risk off assets and when we're trying to de-risk in the monetary system, you know, the banks are collapsing, the, the banks are shutting down lending. I mean, it's crazy. It's, um, and I'm going to go, I'm going to show you a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Um, is de-risking is like we're trying to risk, we're trying to get risk off the balance sheets. And typically when risk is high, they're flooding out to like Bitcoin, things like that. So I think that's what she's saying. The de-risking is people de-risking from the monetary system. They're scared. They're trying to get out of the capital markets. 1% from 1370 to 2076. Um, so these previously volatile uh, risk on... Mm -hmm. Uh, metrics. Yep. So I nailed it. Yep. So she was talking about capital. These are because it's a speculative asset risk on. It's a high risk. So crypto is very high risk. Um, it's a speculative asset. Has zero regulation. It, it's very like, but she's saying because our risk on, our risk off monetary system, people are trying to escape that. They're going to risk on assets, which it's operating completely opposite of what people thought it would, which is a flight to safety now versus a flight to risk. 
are acting like flight to safety. Oh. <laughs> well, we, I couldn't make that shit up. That's awesome. We think this is a theme that you should be watching out for. We think a lot of uh, innovations out there are going to be the flight to safety. Why? Mm. Because they're going to disrupt the traditional world order. What is What are Bitcoin and Ether doing? They are, I mean, by the very fact that they're being considered flight to safety like gold, that's really interesting uh, and suggests um, much broader based adoption and acceptance than I think most people understand. And uh, given, given the uh, government's railing against uh, crypto and really putting pressure in all kinds of regulatory ways on it, uh, we do believe this is going to become uh, an election issue. What's been interesting about this flight to safety is uh, the mega cap tech stocks have been bent. okay. And then she goes, she's going into tech stocks, and so I'm not sure if a lot of you are into stocks, but um, it's just really interesting that the world and dynamic is changing. I've told you guys this is a transition, like things like this. Look at this, guys. So now Apple is getting into savings accounts. Okay, think. Of, let's let's use our logical circuit. Okay, Kraken got in trouble by the SEC for having high yield savings, high yield accounts but apple can launch a 4.15 percent interest rate let's think about this for just a moment guys everything is flipping on us right now it's going peer to peer that's why they're slowing it down right now because the banks the large banks the jp morgans the wells fargo's the bank of america's the goldman sachs they don't want to lose their deposits they don't want to lose the control of the system. So they're getting set up. That's why Bank of America has the most blockchain patents. That's why JP Morgan, remember Bank of America is not just America. It is a juggernaut in the global financial system. It's massive. Don't let the name fool you. JP Morgan is huge in the banking system and deeply interconnected to the 1%. Okay? They have Black uh, 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 Onyx, I was going to go into BlackRock next. They have Onyx, which is their uh, their blockchain technology. They have JPM coin. BlackRock's connected to Coinbase through Aladdin. Circle is connected to BlackRock. It's all interconnected. And as I as, as I dive into this, you know, that's how you get your four point one five percent. That's crazy, guys. Like like this is putting stress on the banks. And then we we'll diving in uh, tomorrow, just going a little bit deeper around. Um, uh, principles for navigating a big debt crisis, right? So this is a type of stuff I study at a deep, deep level. Ray Dalio always puts out his information. It's a 480 page document. It's understanding that there, there, there comes in these hyperflationary environments, which we have a climate change narrative, social geopolitical, which is all the, um, and I'm not, I'm just telling you facts, figures, numbers. So it's, it's, you know, there's a huge transgender agenda, right? Everybody's fighting about that. They get us to fight about things that we never paid attention to before, right? They get us to focus on the fact that there's a guy wearing a dress in the White House. I don't care if you're wearing a dress. Do your job. It doesn't matter. You get us to fight about those things. You get us to fight about the Bud Light thing. Everybody's focused on the Bud Light thing when your monetary system is collapsing. Okay, drink your beer. Who, like, like your monetary system is collapsing. You're they they want you fighting about this stuff. And then I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this. So the, the U.S. monetary supply has fallen 30 percent or more, um, the largest since 30 percent. Tomorrow I'll be going over the value of your dollar is collapsing. You've lost 17 percent, 17 percent of your buying power, 17 percent of your buying power since 2020. So if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year without doing anything. You got a 17% pay cut and you don't even understand. You don't even know it like you, cause we don't, and I'm not bashing you. I'm just saying normal everyday public doesn't understand this. They don't realize they got a 17% pay cut cause they don't understand economics. They don't understand the opportunity cost of money. So that's what I do. That's what I help people do. That's what I understand is now I understand the time value or the opportunity cost of money. I understand cryptocurrency is an investment. It's not my retirement. I have exit plans. We diversify across five pillars of wealth. But most of all, we rewired this. We rewired this. We became disciplined, consistent, 
doing the same things every single day, non-emotional about the markets. We're not attached to the markets. We're not tribal. Everybody, you know, says, you know, I, I like XRP. It's a bridge currency. I know a lot about banking. I like XLM. I like Algorand. I like the ISO tokens because I understand them just like a CrossFitter. I talk about it all the time because that's what they do. Vegans talk about being vegan, right? It, I'm not tribal to XRP. I'm not tribal to XLM. I'm not tribal to these cryptocurrencies. They're just investments that I enjoy talking about. Right. If one goes to zero, it's OK. I have a diverse portfolio. I have a diverse and I'm learning and I'm growing. And now I'm learning about real estate. I'm not an expert in real estate. I'm going to learn about it because I need I need um, uh, tax liabilities. So I just keep going to different phases in my life. I'm coming back and teaching based on my human design. I'm a generator. So that's what I do in my academy. You know, we've helped over six thousand warriors worldwide get their shit together. And guys, it's not about money has nothing to do with money. Once you get your shit together here and here and you're disciplined and consistent, you reconnect your body uh, at, at, a, at a food level and understanding how to be calm, then you make really good decisions. Then you're part of a tribe, an ecosystem. Over 32 companies have been created since our Warrior Academy was created. We're building a ripple effect in the world by changing ourselves and not fighting against any invisible enemy out there. There is no enemy, guys. You're creating the enemy. It's you against you every single day. There's nobody coming back to save me. God is my CEO. I follow the life of Jesus. I'm unconditional love without expectations, only expectations of myself. So after this video in the description down below, you can join our Warrior Academy seven days for free in 2023. Try it before you buy it. 60% of people stay after the seven-day free trial. That should tell you something. Warriors, rise. Get your shit together. Let's go. It's designed to keep you trapped. 2017, I walked out of a high paid vice president job because I was absolutely miserable. Working 16 to 19 hours a day because that's what the system taught me to do. And what I discovered through countless hours of meditation, research, reading books, understanding how the millionaires and billionaires operate, the system is designed to keep you trapped. Today, I own multiple companies. I travel all over the world. I'm financially free, and that's exactly why I created this community of like-minded warriors coming together called the 3T Warrior Academy. Now, I don't say this to brag. I'm sharing this with you to show you what's possible for you. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to take your life to another level, we believe the Warrior Academy has something for everybody. Processes that take you step by step through discipline, consistent activities. And that's exactly what you're going to get. Our 120 day challenge, all you have to do is open up the app and take it day by day. We're gonna take you through the discipline, consistent activities to take your life to the next level. Within one week, you're gonna feel a difference. Within a month, people are gonna notice a change in you. That's how powerful this 120 day challenge is. So if you're truly ready to break free from the old paradigm into a new paradigm of discipline, consistency, great relationship with your family, financial freedom, and learning the pillars of wealth that will change your life and generational wealth to come, I'm gonna invite you to do our program for seven days for free. The 120-day challenge has changed over 5,000 warriors' lives worldwide, and we hope to be yours next. Warriors, ah, let's get you together. Let's go.